was called the Morbid Underground. And it was basically about, uh, about an hour long. <laughs> it was funny because there were rumors going around that we were already together before we actually even met. I had Gigi Allen on there, and you know how Gigi Allen can be. I, um, I was talking to him when he was in jail, and I had gotten to be pretty friendly with him. So I said, hey man, he's a pretty cool dude. I think I'm gonna air some of his stuff. And he said he was gonna come down and do an interview with me when he got out of jail. So I thought, hey, this will be a cool thing to air before he hits the road. You know, kind of like a preview of what's coming around on tour. You know, I was just fulfilling my, my duty as a journalist. And, hmm, what thanks do I get? <laughs> um, basically, I showed a tape that I edited, um, an already edited tape of him performing on stage. You know, he um, defecates and urinates and all kinds of stuff on stage. <laughs> and I showed it to the public access officials and they said, well, there's nothing in the book that says you can't run that. So I said, okay. And I ran it and then the next morning, like radio stations and, and TV news stations were calling me going, did you know that you're facing a $10,000 fine and 10 years in jail? I'm going, uh, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> she had the same lawyer as I did for her case when she got in trouble for on our cable access show for showing Gigi Allen, Gigi Allen taking a shit on stage on there. They threatened me for three months. They um, basically had me all over the air and saying, this is a, the bad guy of Tampa Bay and, and um, let's put her behind bars and all kinds of crap. And um, basically my lawyer wrote them and he was saying that there was nothing in the obscenity law that had defecation in it. So Harry Lee Coe III, which is the state prosecutor, he finally said, yeah, he's right, there's nothing that they could get me for. But now they changed the law and now defecation is in the obscenity law. Uh, she called me one day to offer me support. At the time the whole thing was blown over for a couple months, I was in really, really bad shape, um, financially, mentally, spiritually, and I moved back in with my parents for a little while, and while I was recuperating, I had read this article about Mike Diana, and I was like outraged. I could not believe it. I think it was Christmas of 91. I had the Florida Department of Law Enforcement came to me and they had a copy of number six that I did and they were telling me that because of that issue I did as a suspect in the Gainesville student murders. There was five students murdered in Gainesville and they hadn't found the killer yet at the time. And um, someone had, that I had sent it to in California sent it back to the police here in Florida and they figured since, because of the drawings that were in it, that um, I could have been a killer or something. I'm hoping some killer, I wish like Dahmer had copies of it in his apartment or something. So it would have been good for publicity and stuff. After I printed seven and eight, it was about a year later when I finally got the court, the summons to be in court. So it took them a long time to decide to prosecute the case. I don't think anyone was willing to take the case until Stuart Baggish came across the magazines and he himself is some kind of a comic book collector and I think it just personally offended him when he saw the material at the clerk's office and so he decided he wanted to prosecute the case. And um, they had this full length picture of him <laughs> and I was going I was going, oh man, he looks, I get vibes from people very easily. I was picking up these vibes that um, he was like the nice guy and shy and doesn't hurt anybody. And I was just getting vibes that he was very 
lonely, distressed. He needed somebody, so it took me a week to get his number, but I got it. <laughs> What I ended up getting was three years probation, $3,000 fine, three years worth of community service work, um, can't have any contact with minors, um, have to take a journalism ethics course at my own cost so I could be a serious journalist. It was almost like a dream. It was almost like it wasn't happening. It was almost like it was like a movie, but um, I had bad. I had a bad feeling about it from the very beginning. I was kind of doubtful, but I was trying to be as as optimistic as I could, and I was trying for Mike's sake. I was trying to be. Um, I was trying to help him cope. I was trying to um, make him feel better, and um, when I heard the guilty. When I saw the jury walk in before the verdict, I knew it was going to be guilty because they were looking down like they were kind of shameful and they wouldn't look at Mike. And um, they were kind of like, they had that look and I knew it. And the, I saw the news footage later and um, they showed me crying. I was sitting there, ooh, with my hands over my face. and. Um, then they dragged him off the next thing I knew. Almost well, like I was in shock at first because I couldn't actually believe that I was found guilty and then going to jail at the same time. I thought if I was found guilty they wouldn't actually just put me in jail, especially for um, just drawing. And so um, then I went in there and I was already had been up early that morning for court and I hadn't had any much sleep all week. And I was just looking forward to the weekend where I could sleep at home and and wouldn't have to to um, worry about anything. So I ended up when I was in jail there I couldn't sleep because they have the lights on 24 hours and all kinds of noise and just a metal bed in the cell without any blankets or pillows or anything. So, and there was a lot of murderers and rapists in there and stuff. And they were all saying, I'm in here for raping, and I'm in here for murdering, what do you do? And I said, oh, I drew some pictures. <laughs> I don't know why they put him in maximum security. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, he's like a really bad guy, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they were saying I was the first cartoonist ever to be put in jail for my cartoons in United States history. He was in jail for about four days. Four long days. <laughs> um, well, me and Susie are gonna get engaged sometime in January, we're thinking. Or we are engaged, I mean, but we're gonna get married in January. We're gonna get married. <laughs> <laughs> have to see what happens with my art, see if um, they can leave me alone so I can do it without worrying about getting in trouble for it. Also, I was, uh, like to start thinking about moving out of Florida when I can.